Today I'm talking about making it pop. Um, so this is going to be a different, uh, let's see if I can get this to pause here, there we go. Um, this is going to be a different talk than your typical technical talk at JSConf, and that's not pausing so it's going to be a pain in the butt. Um, there we go, there we go. We'll just go like this I guess. Um, I did have it pause. Uh, there we go. It's now playing? Yeah, there we go. All right, <laughs> good start. So um, this is going to be a little bit different of a talk. Um, it's about visual design and how many of you are just building JavaScript apps all the time? How many of you have like side projects you're working on? Anybody? Cool, so I'm in the, I'm in the right crowd. Um, so uh, this design is about making the apps you build in JavaScript with your amazing code just as beautiful as your JavaScript code. Um, so I'm Kyle Lambert. I'm uh, heading up design at Olark. Um, I work for Olark. We're an awesome company. It's a lot of fun to work there, um, designer, developer, um, but mostly focused on design there. And uh, one of my things at Olark that I'm trying to do is scale our design team. Um, we have a bunch of really talented front-end developers, and they are perfectly capable of making design decisions. We like to code and ship really fast, so trying to get stopped by the bottleneck of a designer sometimes, sometimes it, stuff just needs to get shipped and done. And so my goal at Olark is to equip our engineers to make really good design decisions, just like their goal is to make me a better engineer. Um, so this talk is kind of about that, and. Uh, things you guys can keep in mind while doing that. So, why talk about visual design at JSConf? Well, I wasn't planning on talking at JSConf, but our engineers kind of pushed me into it. Uh, we do weekly tech talks at Olark, and I gave a talk, this talk, and apparently they thought it'd be good for the JS crowd, so they convinced me to do it, so we're just gonna go for it. But I think the benefit of having your design team and development team in communication with each other and able to communicate with each other is so important. It really helps with collaboration. It helps make the process so much faster. And it makes everybody just a better all overall maker. Um, we all have the desire to build stuff from the ground up by ourselves. Like if I can't, I can design things, but if I don't learn how to code, I'll never be able to make my own application myself and design it myself. Same thing with uh, engineers. You're never gonna be able to, you could build an awesome app that looks great on the back end, but if it makes no sense on the front end, it might not make sense for your users. Um, so I thought JSConf played this funny little trick on me. I took this screenshot last week as they added me to the schedule, and notice I'm the only one with a broken, I'm the only talk here that's actually breaking the design of the schedule. So well played JSConf. <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna if, if it wasn't, just claim it as it was. Um, because it's awesome. Um, so why design matters? Um, so we're doing a lot of things when we design things. Um, we're helping communicate to our users. We're helping build trust. Um, we're preparing people for decisions. We're trying to help curate their process and experience. Um, and so we're trying to accomplish a lot with that. Um, so good design is always intentional. Uh, so sometimes you see things like this this picture of a bathroom. I always love going into public places and finding things where design wasn't intentional. Somebody threw up some doors without even thinking about it. And it's, it's just like this poor person is, you know, using the bathroom and just opened up to the world and just in this miserable experience. And uh, that, that can happen all the time when you just throw, to, throw stuff together visually on the front end and expect a user to, to do what you want without thinking about it. And it's stuff I tell, our designers and myself to think about all the time. So it's really important to keep that in mind. Uh, design helps uh, make decisions. So this is another picture, keeping in the bathroom theme, of 
just an awkward experience. So there's a men's room and there's a women's room, but the men's room's kind of pointing to the women's room. So you're kind of like, well, am I going to expect urinals in this room or am I going to a bunch of stalls? And you're just going to find yourself in an awkward experience. So we want to make everything the user does, we want them to know exactly what they're getting into before they get into it. Um, design helps communicate. So um, I don't know, uh, this, this sign isn't doing a great job of communicating. So please no smoking alcohol on the beach. I have not seen anybody smoking alcohol at JS Comp. Um, if you are, that's crazy, but cool. <laughs> so let's just think about what we're trying to communicate when we're doing stuff. Um, so let's go over the basics. I'm going to give you uh, a couple tips just to keep in mind while you're designing stuff, while you're building web applications on uh, the front end side of the user facing side. Um, these will be tips that you can write down and just think about. These are good uh, conversational elements to have with your designers. Please push back on your designers. They'll probably hate me for telling you about this, but um, um, they want to be pushed just like you want to push them uh, in your code reviews and all that stuff. Um, so the basics, number one, hierarchy. This is a really important thing. Um, when a user comes to your page and they don't know what to click, what are you supposed to do? Um, so the thing I tell people is you want to pick out a number one, a number two, and a number three. So what's the most important thing on the page? It should be the most obvious thing. That's your number one. Number two, um, it should be obvious that it's a number two. So we'll go through an example. A good way to tell this is a squint test. I'm kind of doing it for you, blurring it. Um, so you can see the top example, it has just this basic block of text. When you squint your eyes um, and you look over at the right, it's kind of just blurring together. The user doesn't really know what's more important information. Um, so they don't know how to make a decision based on that. If you go to the bottom, um, we've bolded the text for the headline, eat more vegetables, and we've put a button, we've made the call to action sign up button a bit more important. So that's the second most important thing on the element. And then there's display text um, to help reinforce that. But that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing things. Just make things hierarchy. Uh, make the most important things obvious and then go from there. Um, balance is another thing. Um, sometimes you go to a web page and it can be all, everything's on the left hand side and there's some impo like important information out hanging out, um, but it, it looks like it's going to fall over. So this example is we have a line straight down the middle of this page. This line is dividing uh, the white block in half. But on the, the left-hand example, the big blue block is like taking up so much space and it's dominating it. So it's making everything feel like it's going to shift over to the left. Now to offset that on the right-hand example, um, a trick you can do is kind of move the little guys away. So it's creating the illusion of, to your eye that everything's more centered. Contrast. Now, contrast is another important thing. This goes with hierarchy and all, it, I mean, it's, it's definitely a friend of hierarchy. Um, it's going to help you make things more hierarchical, the hierarchical, and it's going to help users to understand what you're trying to get them to do. Um, a great example of this is uh, the Spotify screenshot. Um, so the most high contrast thing you see on the page, the first thing you see is that green button, Get Spotify, in the top right hand corner. That's an obvious statement. Everything else on the page is adding to it, but really Spotify wants you to get the app, so just click that. That's pretty much what they're telling you to do. Um, so the most obvious user action on the page, you want them to be high contrast. You don't want it to blend in, you don't want it to fade to the background because that's the action you want the user to take. White space. Okay, you always, you, everybody needs space, everybody needs room to breathe. This is an important thing in design. You wanna make sure uh, your, your blocks and elements are separated on the page and they're not all mingling together. So on the first example here to the left, we have a block of text um, with a picture and it all kind of runs together. There's, there's no uh, distinction between the elements. It's a muddied mess. You don't really know what's happening. If you move over to the right, we've opened it up a bit too much. So everything is competing. So the eat vegetables, the, um, all those lines are broken up in such a way that they're all individual elements. They're not a block. They're not a whole. Um, 
So all the way to the right, it feels a little better. We've separated the headline, we have the blocks of text that feel like a whole, but they're not scrunched together, and there's room for the uh, user to really digest the information. The important thing here is just digestibility. If you go to a web page and a web app, and you have no clue how to read it, and it's just overbearing, your users are just gonna click away as soon as possible, unless they're really, really interested. Um, alignment, this is another thing that's gonna help users eyes. So in this example, you've all seen like the columns, um, profile pictures on the left hand side, text, you know, like your basic Twitter app. Um, the reason designers are sometimes super picky about, uh, I want this to be moved over one pixel, or they should be, um, if, if they're picky just because if they don't have a reason to sell you on this, then don't listen to them. But the reason you want to keep stuff really aligned is because you want the user's eye to be uh, uh, to scroll down to the page. So this creates a visual line for the user to scroll their eye down to the page. If you break that, then the user is not going to follow you down the page and you're not going to be able to guide them as much. Consistency. This is a huge one. Um, like one of my points before, design should be intentional. Things should be consistent. Um, in this presentation you've seen I'm using and, and there's a gray area for that, but it's like you should have a basic idea of how you want things to flow. I have, I've used a couple different colors, I have a couple different fonts, but everything I'm doing, I'm trying to keep consistent. So um, if you add a new UI element, um, it should go along with the rest of your brand. So if, you've, if you have added something to the front of your site and you have, say your, your, all your buttons are styled and then you throw in a new button uh, and it's a default browser button, then the user is not going to be, com it's, they're going to be a little confused. They might not trust your app quite as much. So just being intentional about the little things is going to really set you apart and bring some uh, clarity and trust to everything you do. Um, this is just an example. You can go online. There's tons of UI libraries and stuff that you can pull apart. Um, you know, you all know Bootstrap and stuff. Bootstrap's great, um, but I want to help you guys understand bootstrap a little bit more so you can make bootstrap a little boot, less bootstrappy and more custom to what you want. Um, so let's go through uh, some of these points and let's go through and make a little widget. Okay, so we're gonna go through everything I've talked about so far and uh, we're gonna talk about it. So number one, um, here's our little silly little widget. Um, where are you from? Help us customize your experience and then a little drop down menu with a submit button. So we're just gonna start off um, bit by bit, point by point, and let's go through and tighten this up a little bit more vi visually. Uh, so hierarchy, we talked about hierarchy first. The first thing we're gonna do is, okay, let's um, increase the size of the question, the main question we're asking the user. That should be the first thing, like they need to know what they're getting into. Um, that helper text isn't, the help us customize your experience isn't super important. Um, it could be, but we're gonna, um, bring down the point size, so um, separating the top headline and the helper text is going to help us create hierarchy. Number two is balance. Okay, so you can see, uh, and I'm going uh, left is the previous widget and right is what we're updating. So it's a little unbalanced. Everything shifted over to the right uh, or to the left hand side on the left hand widget and it's, it just seems a little sloppy, unintentional. Um, so this will bring intention to your design. So you want everything to feel balanced. Let's center everything, put it in the middle, and it makes sense. Contrast, okay. Well, let's make it a little bit, uh, let's increase the hierarchy. Let's make things a little bit more apparent what we want the user to do. So uh, we, we made the submit button green, added more contrast to it, obvious that we want them to click. And we took down the contrast of the help us customize this experience because it's still not that important. So we're, we're gonna tone it back even more. Um, so contrast will help us build even more hierarchy. White space, okay, so this text is feeling a little, this widget's feeling a little crammed and we have plenty of room, of room on this page to add some white space. So we opened up the padding on the sides. We gave the submit button a little bit more padding so it, it's even more of a call to action and it makes sense. But when we did that, we, are, we, did, we forgot to align our, um, the drop-down menu with the submit button. So that's something that on the left-hand side, it looks kind of like a mistake. Um, but if you put in a little bit more effort, 
you have those things aligned. That's the polish that are, is gonna make your users just appreciate little things and add a little bit of trust to what you're doing. Um, consistency. Now this, could be, this one might be a little bit hard for, for some people to pick up, but it's just something to train your eye to look for. The inconsistent thing here is the fonts and this is where I might lose you a little bit, but I hope I keep you, is the fonts in the drop-down menu and the fonts in the submit button are, are different uh, than the other fonts on the left-hand side. Um, so it's, it's a small nuance, but if you can start picking up on those things and like I just have a default font on the left-hand side, but I realized, oh man, I'm using Helvetica, so I, let's just update everything to Helvetica because it's more intentional. It's an intentional decision. Um, so we have a before and after shot. Now this is like, uh, this is pretty big difference in my eyes as a user or as a designer. Um, these are small updates that we made. They're nothing huge. There's nothing groundbreaking about them. All I'm doing is um, I'm thinking about what I'm doing. So I just uh, I encourage you guys to keep these points in mind while you're designing apps, while you're building your side projects um, so you can make them more successful. And so you can push back on your designers when they hand you stuff and um, get involved even in the design conversation as well. Um, so that's it. Um, if you want to learn more, please go to hackdesign.org or goodui.org. Those are really awesome you, um, resources for developers. Um, Hack Design is a curated uh, weekly email for developers who want to level up on their design skills. Um, but it's super helpful. Um, so I just want to thank you guys. I'd love to talk with you after if you're interested in you know, merging your design and development teams and how to bring communication between those. Um, and if you just want to talk design or talk development, I'd love to talk with you um, or talk with any of our OLARKers over there. Um, we're looking for more awesome people. So if that kind of work interests you, the hybrid approach, and you're a developer and want to get more into the design side, we're definitely doing that at OLARC. So thank you guys, have a great day.